Hello, theme park enthusiasts, and welcome back to Planet Coaster. In this episode, I'm going to put in another ride in the park for Appleford Amusement Park. So, I had been looking while I was actually doing the audio for the last video over the kids area, and I realized I had this space over on this side here and just wasn't sure what to do with it. Then, thought about it overnight and realized, you know, what would really fit well here would be sort of a kid's wooden roller coaster. We have the sort of apex ride of the park in the monster with its giant height and its drops and such. And so what I wanted to do was sort of build a kid's version of the monster, something that would still have thrills and stuff that would make kids feel like adults, but at the same time is a much more kid-friendly size. And I thought, you know, I can curve that around this corner here, take up this space, and it'll really sort of finish off this portion of the park other than the foliage and things of that nature for it. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, I did a bit of research on kids' roller coasters, or family wooden roller coasters, and for the most part what I found is that the heights range from roughly 50-ish feet for the biggest drop to around 79, 80 feet. So with that in mind, I tried to stay within those parameters. I think I did. I think that the final drop ended up to be around 76 feet, though it could be a foot or two more. I'm not positive. But in that way, I feel like it fits that sort of parameter of it's not huge in comparison to a lot of other coasters, but it will give some fun thrills and be an enjoyable ride for kids. Additionally here then, so what I'm doing here is I'm just sort of adjusting the hill heights to try to get as much momentum as I can out of this because I do not want a second hill to this coaster at all. I want it to just go through on the singular drop. So with that, I knew I wanted to have a bunch of bunny hills and I also with this coaster wanted it to wind in and out of itself some and have some twists and turns because I do feel like on a family coaster, you do have a lot more turns that go on with it. So you're going to see me here changing and also testing it to see how the speed is as we go through. Um, I am going to put in a block break section here, just about this section here, as it goes through that hill and back over to the other side. Additionally with this coaster, I also really kept my eye on the actual drop angles because I felt like for a kid's coaster that also was important. So originally there, I had it set up as a 50 foot height. As you can see here, I just changed it. So the uh, the drop now is closer to that, as I said, that 76 foot mark. And that way I just get that little bit of extra speed that I was needing in order to get the coaster around in a practical manner that was still gonna be fun for the riders. So several times here, I basically wanted to see how it would connect the end piece here. Didn't like it at all the way they did it. So making adjustments based on it. And what I ended up finding with this coaster is, for me at least, when I'm doing a wooden coaster, I prefer actually crafting it myself instead of using any of the pieces they create. When I'm doing other coasters, especially with loops and things of that nature to them, I like the in-game assets as I feel like they make it easier to create the coaster. But for something like this, you'll see I actually do end up using uh, two helixes here. This is the first one, and I use another one there. and. While they sort of fit what I was looking for for the particular area in the twist and turns that I wanted, I don't like the fact that for one with their helixes, you lose the sides on the turn. Um, it sort of felt like everything else has the, the walkway there so that people could get off and on if need be. And then suddenly for no apparent reason, that area there just is track. So that wasn't gonna work for me. I had to change that. But also, as I was saying prior to that <laughs> sort of sidetrack there, um, with the lift or with the different hills and stuff, I kept pretty much all of my angles of descent at around or below 45 degrees. Um, you are able to go higher than that with a wooden coaster. I could have taken it up, I believe, all the way to 60 degrees or so. But again, considering that this was a family coaster, I didn't really want to do that. I wanted the drops to be a bit more rounded and so therefore a bit more uh, easy going and relaxed for the riders. So there I went ahead and put in my version of those helixes, testing it out here, and as you're gonna see with it, we don't have quite the speed to get up the end here. So I had to make some adjustments based on that, lower this section some, and really at this point, the ride actually does work. It's not exactly what I want though, because especially the ending I feel like is a bit stagnant. 
So you will see me go ahead and make some corrections to this still, because I want it to be a bit more exciting. I don't want it to be thrilling, it's not for adults really in that aspect, but I did want it to be a bit more exciting than it is. Also, I did make a choice here of going with a different uh, wooden coaster track as well as coaster uh, car style. And the reason for that is, as far as the lore of the park goes, I actually want this wooden coaster to be a fairly recent addition to the park. Uh, maybe they would have had a flat ride or two in this area in the past. And just in the recent years, they really have seen that even little kids are enjoying their coasters. And so they want something that's a bit more exciting for the younger generation. So they would have ripped out those flat rides and they went ahead and purchased this. So I wanted to go with a wooden coaster, but I wanted one that would actually have sort of some colors to it and a more modern looking train to it. And that way it really gives that idea that the thing is a fairly new coaster overall. So here I'm just looking at the uh, different G-forces and such, seeing what was exciting and what was not. And really the long end that I had to it there was a major issue to it. So I went ahead and removed part of that end. I made the turn there a little bit tighter. And that way I could fit in a few more bunny hills here is really what I was wanting to do. And that way hopefully make something that would be enjoyable for the riders. Now you'll notice here when I made it that time, actually the second train is sort of at an angle descending downwards. So it couldn't actually go upwards. And with that the train doesn't function, it stops at the center block brake to it. So instead, I adjusted that real fast, put in another bunny hill there, take another ride on it to make sure that it is what I want. There will be a ride at the end of the video that is in real time, not sped up like this, so you can definitely enjoy it and the sounds of the coaster at that point in time. You will definitely hear a difference in this coaster versus uh, the monster in the fact that this coaster is much more easy going along the tracks. You're not going to hear the squeal of metal as the wheels are trying to hang on for dear life kind of thing. Um, the wheels have no problem with grip and such on this coaster. Now with this one, being that the the station is set up a bit high, I did a few different things here. For one, you're gonna notice there aren't windows on this place. Uh, the only entrance and exits are sort of controlled, and that way little kids being there will be safe. If they go out either of the doors, there's gonna be a nice easygoing ramp going downward, which is also why I didn't feel like I needed to have the uh, stroller areas and stuff like that, because of the fact that um, everything can be sort of brought up and then just housed in the station. I do wanna put like a baggage area into the station still, which I do still have to, to put in. It's not in this video, but it will be a little detail that I'll add in later. I also, you will see, put in a second attendant in the station so that they sort of watch the entrance of the coaster area. That way you have the one person with the exit of the coaster that goes out onto the track. And then on the other side, you have the other person. So that way, again, just kids that are being a little bit too uh, excited and try to get out into those areas will be stopped by an adult. And on top of that, there are the catwalks all the way around. So they will be safe as they're going. Now, I will say it has been a while since I actually did a Planet Coaster video. I've been doing the audio on the ones in the last few weeks that I had, but really the actual creation of the rides that you saw in those was done a couple months ago. And so you are going to notice a few things as I'm playing along here, especially when I go to put in the rampways. You're going to see some things pop up on my screen for a minute. And the reason for that is because of the fact that I could not for the life of me remember the buttons to control the game. It has been a while, and so definitely had sort of a learning curve going on, trying to remember how to control the game like I used to. And hopefully I will get back into the swing of that, because I do plan on having several more episodes to go here. I already know what the next ride is that is going to come into the park, and so I will be putting that in here in probably the following week. And then after that, I plan on a episode where I put some flat rides in, and then we'll have a final episode. I am going to do all the trees, everything like that, but I've really thought about it, and I don't think that's something that's going to be too entertaining to watch, just me putting in trees and plants and everything into the park. So what we'll do is we'll have a final episode where I will show off the park in its entirety with all of the gardening done and such. And in that episode, then we will also take a ride on all of the different coasters and everything while there are people in the park. So it will be a fairly long episode because you'll get on-ride POVs of everything, but you'll actually see the park sort of alive at that point with the guests in, everything of that nature. So that's sort of the schedule I have planned. 
upcoming for this series. As you can see here, what I was trying to do is I could not remember for the life of me how to actually make the rampway go down. So I was struggling some, finally had to look in the settings feature there, figure it out. A bit embarrassing, I will say, but as I said, it's been a while since I've played this game. And having played games like Park Beyond and Architects, it's, their controls are slightly different. So it is sort of that trying to get used to the difference of them as time goes on. So here, as I said, this is sort of inspired by the monster. And so I did want the name from the monster, but to show that this one's for little kids. So this is the little monster. And so we do have the more modern neon lights that are on the inside of the station. But I did also want to go with the traditional lights on the outside so that it really ties into the old coaster. And then I wanted them to be visible to guests in both directions. First we'll change them to be the appropriate colors to the park. And then after that we'll go ahead and I'm going to copy them over so that they fit for the park as it is. In the rest of the episode here then, what I'm going to be doing is basically sort of the cosmetics for the place. Uh, you've already seen me set up the station building there, and so I'm going to go ahead and go back to it, add in the lights so it ties in with the rest of the park. And then for this one, I actually wanted to do something a bit different. Not sure how normal it is per se, but it was something that just sort of fit what I wanted for the building or for the ride overall. And so I'm going to do a secondary building that is going to basically be the photo uh, at the same time, ironically, as I was testing the coaster at one point, I did get a prompt. Now, I have closed the park, so everybody's supposed to be leaving. But I did get two prompts from the people right now that, for one, there's not enough benches, which I do know I have to put in still because I was going to do that as part of the sort of uh, gardening pass to the overall building. And then the other thing was that people were not able to find enough restrooms. So I did think about the fact that really in this part of the park, there is not a restroom available to the customers. So I figured what I wanted here was something fairly simple. You're not gonna have a bunch of merchandise here and we have the large merchandise store just down the pathway here a little bit. So I didn't feel like I needed a giant store here. Instead, what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and put an ATM into the facility that I'm going to create here. I went ahead and put a photo booth that I had found on the workshop that I sort of customized to fit this particular aesthetic. And then I went ahead and threw a bathroom into it. So it's a very simple building overall. But as I said, I just wanted something that basically fit the needs of the guests, gave them what they needed, but at the same time was pretty straightforward. So here, as I said, we're just doing this lighting pass on the building overall. Uh, I made them all on one side, got them exactly how I wanted them. Then I just went ahead and copied them all over. This portion I had to do independently because of the fact that the, the opening is going to be on the opposite side as it would be on the uh, from where the coaster starts out. Then I'm going to do the same thing here. Basically, create one row, then copy it up, then copy it down to where the other line is. Uh, where the different colors come out and then one more time where that color changes again right there And then we're gonna go ahead and do the edging of the walls as well And once I get this side sort of set up the way I want it to be Then I'll go ahead and copy this entire side to the back side of the building But with that in mind really I don't have much else to say so as I said, I'm just going to let you enjoy the footage here as uh, I have finished creating the little monster. And then at the end, there will be an on-ride POV of the little monster with just the game audio and stuff so you can really appreciate the coaster as it is. With that in mind though, if you enjoyed what I did in this episode, please go ahead and click that like button. And please feel free to leave a comment. I always love to read what you guys think of my different videos. Sometimes it might not be the most positive thing, but that's okay. I'm willing to take critical feedback as well as positive, And I do want people to enjoy what I'm doing. So if there's something that I can do that would make it more entertaining for you, by all means, let me know. Uh, for now though, as I said, we're just going through this coaster, putting in the lighting. Oh, that is one note I did sort of want to say here. Um, First I started putting in this yellow lighting and I felt like it took away from the sign there. I didn't like that. So I go with purple lighting throughout this ride. And as you notice, I am putting in the floodlight lighting instead of as I did with the monster with the fairy lights all the way along it. Um, I wanted to get this video done this week and not in, you know, 
a month or so, which is realistically how long it takes to try to put the fairy lights all the way along a wooden coaster. Uh, really, after the monster, I do not intend on putting fairy lights along a coaster ever again. <laughs> uh, that may change in the future, but as of right now, I don't plan to. I feel it still fits with the lore anyways because of the fact that they wouldn't want to really take away from the monster. They want to keep it as sort of special and unique. And so instead, what they would have done is done more of the modern lighting that they're using in different places in the park. And a perfect example of that is, as I was working on it here, I saw that that ferris wheel really could have used a bit more lighting, and so I brought over the same light. So that way it sort of connects into the area a bit more, they feel like they work together a bit. And I really like that. But as I said, all that being said, please go ahead and click that like button if you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And with that in mind, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video of Wolford Amusement Park.